All right, well, happy Wednesday, everybody. Normally this show, the Ask a Painter Live show, comes to you live on Friday, but I am going to go on an extended uh, time with my family starting uh, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, through the next week, on 10 days, give or take. So I thought I would not interrupt your family time and do the Ask a Painter show today, Wednesday, uh, the day before Christmas Eve. So uh, as promised, we are gonna dive into my vans. We're gonna dive into my tools. Uh, we are going to share these with you, my basic uh, standard operating procedure for tools and all that other stuff. I'm going to give you a quick Slavic shop tour, but first, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the PCA. What's going on with the PCA right now? Well, you can get free industry standards. So, have you ever wondered what technically is a flaw? When a client says there's a flaw on a wall, uh, the PCA actually has a standard to tell you what is it, how do you identify it, and even how you fix it. Uh, also, right now, it is award ceremony uh, application time for the PCA, so there's all sorts of PIP awards. These are, you know, best residential, best commercial, best industrial, best historic restoration. I just turned in my packets today for the projects that my awesome craftspeople did this year. It's been fun kind of retrospect to look back at all of our projects. And you can, uh, you be a member of the PCA, you can turn in awards. There's even a uh, uh, interesting marketing award if you've had an interesting marketing idea as well. And a whole bunch of really, really interesting sort of like altruistic sort of um, uh, awards in there. So to be recognized your peers for those things is a great thing and I would urge you to do it. Uh, so yes, thank you to the PCA, the Painting Contractors Association. Link down below, contact me if you need any more info. My email address is at the bottom of this thing. I will send all these infographics to you. So I'm gonna take you on a quick Slavic shop tour because we have been breaking ourselves. Well, I shouldn't say we, they, my awesome craftspeople and my shop manager, Brandon, has been in here breaking themselves, getting this place in order the last couple weeks of the year. It's been a flurry of activity. We moved in a couple months ago. Spray booth right behind me is in and installed. We're waiting for HVAC and a little bit of electrical, fire suppression. And then, uh, let's see, what else? Oh yes, quick makeup air stuff too, and that'll be ready to go. So I'll take you around for a quick tour and then we will get to it today. So, all right. <clears throat> we have the lounge here. This is sort of the dropping point for everything. Big shipment of uh, paint for next week just came in. This is sort of taking place here. Uh, thank you, Zach Kenny, for the idea for the parts washer here. Super eco-friendly and works awesome in our spray equipment. Just got some new racking delivered this week. Uh, this is something kind of cool that me and my craftspeople like to do. All of our sprayers are in these totes here, numbered, lettered. You can see Brandon here's got a system for repairing them and getting them back on the shelf, but they're all in totes. So craftspeople can just sort of grab one of these, head to the job site, and uh, it prevents spills and things like that. Inoperable sprayers, so these are being fixed or uh, being washed. Crew tools here, you can see all our uh, totes, our tote system, which we're gonna go through over here. Uh, they're all uh, numbered and lettered and uh, color-coded as well for the crews. Oh yes, spray booth, putting the last final touches on this guy. This is our custom made downdraft sanding table here. Whole bunch of fun stuff going on in here. Filters, industrial fans, holes cut out, surf prep banner, of course, to be hung up. This stuff, folks, all of my fast rack equipment. Uh, more to follow on that. This is, uh, uh, I've been working with them to outfit this, uh, this world-class finishing shop and uh, they are not disappointing. So lots more to follow on that. We've got a couple random other pieces uh, for our spray booth. We've got our drywall texture machine, couple extra shop vacs. This thing is something fairly innovative too. This is one of our little training rooms. This is a 15 by 15 standard bedroom mock-up. You can see we have a knockdown ceiling. We have smooth walls and I'll show you the, this is really cool here. So supply room, I'll take you guys through there, but this is our uh, training room number two. And young Cole is in here today training with our master trainer, Tina, and he's just putting the finishing touches on his bedroom. We have a four hour bedroom standard here and that's from moving furniture, prepping, taping, patching, sanding, two coats of paint, and cleaning up, and vacuuming, and sweeping, and we test people in here. So you can see we mocked up a door because you gotta have a door in a bedroom. You gotta have a window in a bedroom. That's all just standard Princeton casing. And Cole's taking off his tape right here. Let's check his line, oh yeah. Looking good, man. And then we also mocked up the big opening, the double door for like a closet, give or take. So yeah, we have 
two training rooms. Something that people were very interested in this week is our supply room. Brandon has been doing the Lord's work in here, getting all this stuff set up. And we're going to talk about this stuff today. Now, people always say, do you buy in bulk? Do you, do you, uh, do you stock up? Does that save you money? No. Uh, Two-thirds of this stuff in here is equipment. It's fans, it's zip poles, it's brushes, it's, it's other stuff. Uh, you can see we don't carry much tape at all. Uh, in fact, 90% of what we use is blue frog tape. The rest of the stuff is for special projects we have coming up. We want about a week or two worth of supply here. So if you can see, we don't have that much tape here. You know, for 10 crews out in the field, that's probably less than uh, half a week's worth of tape right there. Uh, shipments will be coming later. You can see plastic. We go through tons of plastic. We'll rifle through that stuff. Uh, we keep no paint. This is all primers and things down here that we use for jobs. Uh, we rifle through uh, primers. We probably go through about eight or ten gallons of uh, mineral spirits a week on various jobs. And these are just random, you know, ceiling paint, things like that down there. Drywall, again, we don't keep that much. We only keep about five boxes of, uh, of light mud, a little bit of five minute and some 20 minute. But the goal is not to have a whole bunch of stuff around the shop. You know, I like uh, something that I learned back in college is JIT inventory, just in time inventory. Something comes in, something comes out. You have a little bit extra. This is paint that we have uh, for jobs. Uh, and if it's left over, we keep a little bit of enamel on site here. But really, what we want to do is not have anything here. So basically, at the end of every week or two, if we don't use any of this stuff, this stuff is going to the recycler or we'll give it away or we'll let painters take it home uh, for their own use. So you can see we've been busy. Uh, they've actually been whiting out all of our equipment here. We've been taking apart all of our shelves. We've been putting scuff X on all of this because I like neat, I like orderly, I like everything to be the same color. We use one color, one paint, one finish on all the shop fixtures. You see there's shop manager Brandon. <laughs> and we actually got these lockers. My wife tracked these down and he sprayed those too. So we got nice white lockers for the entire company here though. So, all right, so let's get to it. What you guys were here for. Let's open up one of these vans and we'll show you our basic tools and our basic supplies. Again, I'm gonna show you this. Uh, if you want these, I will give them to you for free if you email me. My email address is right there. Our vans, number one. Um, we have about, let's see, 13 or 14 uh, Dodge Caravans. We have a Ford Fusion for my estimator, Andy. We have two pickup trucks. I actually drove my Dodge Ram plow truck because it is a blizzard out here now. We have, again, simplicity and standardization. That's what you guys are gonna see here. These racks, every single rack in this company is the same, except for one van that came with one, and it's my drywall cruise rack. Uh, they are Vantex. They are simple. They're 220, 260 bucks. They cost about 200 bucks to put in, and when you partner with a local auto shop, they get really good at it and really quick at it, and you just pop a ladder rack on there. They're super safe. They have the Velcro tie-downs. But we also use ratchet straps because if anybody's gonna get hurt, it's gonna be because uh, an extension ladder falls off. So we're very careful. We actually have an SOP for putting ladders on the trucks. All right, let's pop this sucker open here. The general idea of this stuff is to standardize. Uh, why do we pick Dodge Caravans? So number one, uh, they are cheap, they are plentiful, and they're uniform. And they can also haul more stuff in the back than my Dodge Ram can. My Dodge Ram, parked right outside, has a six and a half foot bed. You can take an eight foot piece of plywood and slide this all the way in with the seats down and close the door. You cannot do that with my Dodge Ram. These things are masterful vehicles. My personal vehicle, the one that I drive around, my mobile command unit is exactly this van and it's modular so I can put a desk in back, I can put it all down when I go ice fishing, I can put all the things up, I can take you know, my entire family of six people with me. People always ask this, they are super cheap. Um, I can get a, the, 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 the cost of these vans range from about $9,000 to $15,000. A $15,000 van is probably a 50, 60,000 mile van, couple years old, give or take. A $9,000 van is probably your 100 to 130,000 mile van. Uh, they're plentiful. I work with a neighboring, uh, my business mentor is actually a used car dealer and he's got his eyes out for these all the time and we find them and we've been able to build a fleet because for about nine to $10,000, you can build your fleet. 
If you were going out to buy you know, transit vans or even pickup trucks, $28,000, $38,000 a piece, you can buy three or four of these babies for the price of some of those vehicles. So when we're aggressively growing a company, it's, it's necessary that we do this. Um, fuel. We use so much fuel, we actually own a thousand dollar fuel or a thousand gallon fuel barrel and we have a fuel truck come to our facility, fill it up and we save about 20 or 30 cents a gallon, give or take when we do that. It's still a lot of money. It's not something I'm proud of spending that much money, but if you got to fuel all these vans, that's the way to go. You don't have 10 crews, 20 people running around fueling vans up. You don't have all these uh, fuel cards running around. One bill once a month and everybody goes out there and, and punches in a code and gets gas. Uh, what else? Maintenance issues. They cost about three to five hundred bucks a year to maintain, give or take. They are used vehicles. So on average, every van is going to be three to five hundred bucks. And let's give you the quick, the quick tour. So I picked this van because this is a three person crew. And I also picked this van because it's trainer Tina's van. She is the most anal retentive, cleanest person in this entire company. And you'll see this, her van will show. Uh, Tina is the purple crew, as you'll see. She even has her name and tape on some of this stuff. One of the coolest things that uh, we've adopted over the years is a simple tote system. There is nothing you see in here that you can't get at a hardware store, big box store, Sherwin-Williams. This is cool. We've adopted this. This is something we call the perishable tote in the company. This has everything in it from mud, caulk, tape, spray cans of cover stain, anything. Oop, I don't want to mess up Tina's stuff. I get yelled at. Anything that can freeze overnight, even if there's a little can of primer or something like that, has to come inside. We cannot leave sprayers out here. We cannot leave cans of paint. We can't leave any of that stuff out here because it'll freeze overnight. So this is called the perishable tote. When my crews are done for the day, they'll take this out and they'll bring it in the shop. They'll place it on the rack over here so then it doesn't freeze overnight. Now, next really cool thing that we do, like you saw over with my sprayers here, it seems like there's a lot of stuff in here except this is Tina's beloved sprayer in here, too. You can see she's got spray shoes, spray hat, respirator down there, her nicely cleaned out sprayer with extension, everything coiled up, ready to go, no leaks, nothing like that. So again, modular. When you show up to a job site, if that thing's got a couple drips of thinner or water or uh, pump armor in it or something, it's already contained in there. You can bring this into a client's house, set it on a drop cloth, good to go. So that is a sprayer. We're changing our SOP on air scrubbers a little bit. Uh, we have a whole bunch of these industrial fans, which everybody knows and loves. In the past, we've had my HVAC guy build boxes. In the meantime, they get really big, so we're adapting, and we're just putting a screen, and we're putting filters in here uh, when we do enameling in people's houses. Small totes for hand tools. You can see Tina's got her own personal bag of hand tools here. Everything dress right dress, everything color-coded, and Tina's the master at touch-ups and things like that, so she's got her uh, artist brushes there. Look at that, nothing better than that. Nobody does it better than Tina. So of course we got all our putty knives, cleaning brushes, scissors, things like that. Miscellaneous crew tools here. We got the spray goggles, we got the uh, drills, things like that. Put this back for Tina. Well, while we have this out, I can also, here, I'll set this down. So another thing too, in the, in the Minnesota winter, if we put a bunch of extension ladders up on these things, they can get full of ice and snow. So what we do a lot of the times, we get the, here I'll pull Tina's pretty backpack out of here too. We'll get the collapsible ladders like this. And this, since we don't use a lot of extension ladders in the winter, we only need it for maybe two or three moves for a stairwell, we'll carry those around or we'll carry those three section aluminum 16 foot ladders. Tina's got a three-person crew, so she's got three step ladders like that. Uh, those are my favorites. Uh, let's see, we'll go around the side for that stuff. But you can see all the senior people in my company have these as well. So again, when you're thinking about ease of getting onto job sites and stuff like that, uniform tools, uniform equipment, and uh, just grabbing one of these and going into a job site is super efficient. Coming along the side, you can see standard issue as well. I want my people to have one gallon cut cans. We also got a purdy pail in there as well. I want my people to have a five gallon bucket as well for box and paint. Tina's got all her stuff here, her stir sticks. This is something cool too. Everybody in my company has a prep pouch. We get them for about uh, 12 or 13 bucks on Amazon. Dickies, same people that make all our painter's pants. And they wear this and they go around and they have tape, they have a cleaning brush and a putty knife. 
so that uh, you're not carrying all that stuff or setting it down. Cleaning bucket, we got all our microfibers. Nice clean deuce right here so that uh, we can SVT. The T of the SVT is tack rag. That's what we use for tack rags. Nice clean water bucket right there. We've standardized all the shop vacs in the company. We've used a little bit smaller Craftsman ones. They just had a monstrous sale at Ace Hardware on these. I think they were 20 or 30 bucks. So uh, that's what all those boxes were in the supply room. Again, very important to get the brush attachments as well. A little bit of mineral spirits and uh, furnace filter in there as well, just in case we have to plug the vents. We'll come around here. So Tina has a three-person crew. Typically what happens is most people, I would say 80% of the people in this company drive their personal vehicles to the job site. So usually only one person, maybe Tina and Apprentice drive this. If she needs more people, when her stuff's on site, we can always just pop up all the seats and get in there. So you can see a standard issue a set of canvases, drop cloths, would be four big sort of 15 by 15s and four runners, which we call, which are four foot by 12 or four foot by 15. Uh, Tina's got some on site. Uh, this is the standard uh, way to pack all these. If you just pile these suckers up and throw them in here, not only are you taking dust and debris from job sites, you're also taking up all the space back here. This only takes about 38 seconds of drop cloth to fold up. You put them in here, you're done. Extension poles down here, broom and dustpan, and this is where we store all of our basic stuff in here. So Tina's fresh off a job site here. These things, oop, let's get our, get our light back up there. There we go. All right, these things, uh, very, very thin, another little trick we've developed over the years, very, very thin floor mats. They got rubber back, they got uh, the fabric on top. These are basically just cheap doormats, floor mats. And we cut them and we actually lay these out in front of refrigerators. Um, we roll the fridge up on top of these and we have never scratched a floor using this. The rubber grips the wood floor. This keeps the wheels rolling on top. And you can see we, we buy one, we rip it in half and those are fridge mats like that. So for maybe four or five bucks, you can guarantee yourself never to scratch a wood floor. So Tina has all her plastics down here. You can see uh, taped up so they don't unroll. Caulking guns, extension cords all laid out, hand maskers, LED lights like the one we're doing here. Standard issue, uh, when we patch walls, we hold one of these in our hands. All the rest of her sort of taping supplies and cords are in there. Put this back down for you. Pivot tool. Standard issue, we want at least one for every crew. When we're doing exterior work, normally there's two for a two-person crew or three for a three-person crew because we use those so often. 12-foot painter's plastic, contractor trash bags to make the homeowner's home nice and clean. And then we have the beautiful roller, brush, tray liner. Our standard trays are the deep ones like this. And we have tray liners for that so we don't have to keep cleaning them out. Pretty white doves, half inch, our standard roller covers. Tina was doing a ceiling, so she's got she's got a marathon in this one. And then because Tina's Tina, she's got her brush rolls like this. This is something that uh, uh, I got for her. Uh, she took a lot of care of her brushes and uh, I saw how she was organizing them and I thought, you know what, if anybody deserves some of this stuff, I tracked some of these down for her again and uh, she's got a couple of those to keep her brushes done. And yeah, nobody does it better than Tina. I think you know why everybody calls her Terrific Tina as a, as a client just did. So, all right, well, that's the basic issue right there of, uh, of tools and supplies for that. Uh, I will scroll through here and see who's got some questions. Thank you everybody for watching so much. There is a huge blizzard going on right now. So that's why I drove the plow truck into town and we still have a couple crews out. So if they need me to run, I'm gonna go run and uh, I got tow rope and all that other good stuff in there. So, all right. Oh yeah, Tina's, Tina's watching here. That's actually Tina's apprentice in there, Cole doing that room. So she was, uh, she was mentoring him up today. So Don Mendez, nice. Let me stop by and grab some things. Absolutely, bring your credit card, Don. Uh, Brandon will be happy to run it through our, uh, our credit card machine and you can take whatever you want from the supply room then. So, all right, Let's see what we got. Oh, Alex St. Germain, one of our master crafts people in there as well. Oh, Joe Delafay from Benjamin Moore. Thanks for watching, Joe. Uh, 
always like talking with Joe here. Oh, Peter from Australia. I love it. Every time we're doing this, it's always good morning. Well, good morning down in Australia and happy holidays. Ah, Mark Blackers just took some notes. Definitely helpful. Thank you very much. Bryant Eckers, uh, love the tote system. May have to implement that myself. Awesome efficiency. Thank you so much. <laughs> you keep the blizzard. We don't want it here in Wisconsin. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think which way the wind is going. I think it's coming your way. Uh, you're probably going to get a little bit of taste of this here. So, All right, folks. Um, I will certainly stay. Uh, I'll, I'll be patrolling this after. If any of you guys have any questions, uh, we, will, we will address those. Otherwise, yeah. Listen to that wind howl. <laughs> it is going to be a white Christmas, though, which is really cool. So we were all hoping for that. So, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me. This has been an awesome year. We have a very special show next week for you guys. Uh, I am going to be in a wilderness cabin near the Canadian border with my family. I'm sure I could try to line something up in an ice shanty to do Ask a Painter Live. It'll be a uh, probably less painting and more introspective sort of look back on the year, a recap and things like that. Uh, oh, Ryan. Hey, happy holidays, everybody. Kane and Mole, past apprentice and craftsperson there too. Thank you guys so much. Um, remember the PCA. This is the time of the year where I've spent almost the entire month of December ideating, going over my year's numbers. I'm known for job costing. I have re-job costed 52 entire weeks of this company's uh, profit and loss, uh, materials, labor, everything else, because even as this year went on, I learned some things and I went back and I changed the way we did it. So I spent an entire day, about 14 hours, going back of every week of this year and redoing all the financials into some usable, digestible thing. I say this because this is the time of year we start thinking about what we want to do for next year. We, we think about lessons learned. Did we earn? Did we learn? Then we think about our goals for next year. If you want help with that, not only am I here, the PCA is here to help you. The things I've learned, the things that my business is doing right now are a direct response to the things that I've encountered and seen and been privy to from the people in the PCA. So I would say, if you don't know where to go in 2021, if you want to do something big, but you don't know how to accomplish it, whatever you're trying to do has been done many times in different ways, in different markets, with different people, and they're all in the PCA and they can help. So link there, nick at nickslavic.com if I can help with anything towards the end of the year at the start of the next year, including these bad boys. So I will gladly send you all of my standard issue stuff like this, and I'd be happy to help you create SOPs, whatever you'd like. Uh, we've got a couple more questions, and then I'm gonna punch out on some family time here. Uh, Jason. <laughs> Thank you very much. Kanan, Merry Christmas, man. Phil Klein, my buddy from uh, Iowa, thank you so much. Uh, Beach House, oh, Merry Christmas, you and your family. Uh, thank you for the help, absolutely. It's been great to get to know you guys and uh, corresponding. And uh, again, everybody, thank you. It's been an awesome year. It's been a challenging year. Uh, we got a lot to go over uh, next week in kind of the year recap and the retrospective. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And we will see you next week.